Last month, world leaders converged in New York to take stock of how much they had achieved under the Millennium Development Goals, set up 15 years ago, as well as to map a way forward for the next 15 years. They adopted the 2030 Agenda for Development, which included the new goals dubbed Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. According to the UN Millennium Development Goals Report of 2015, significant strides have been made globally at reducing extreme poverty and hunger, achieving universal primary education, gender equality and women empowerment, um, enhancing maternal and child health, combating HIV, AIDS, malaria and other diseases, ensuring environmental sustainability and developing a global partnership for development. However, the report also shows that there's a significant disparity in progress and achievement between developed and developing countries. This is because each government was left to set its own national targets, depending on its resources and national circumstances. As a result, many countries were unable to realize the, the MDGs within the 15-year time frame. Furthermore, the UN family faces new global challenges today, including climate change, global terrorism, international crime, including human trafficking and cybercrime, and of course, conflict. Be that as it may, the value of a unifying agenda underpinned by shared goals and targets cannot be underestimated. The new goals, uh, or SDGs, and the broader sustainability agenda go much farther than the MDGs, addressing the root causes of poverty and the universal need for development that works for all people. The question and challenge is, however, whether those countries that have lagged behind in working towards the achievement of the MDGs will be able to achieve the even more ambitious SDGs. I've been asked to share some personal thoughts and reflections on what I think needs to be done towards achieving goal 16. Under that goal, countries um, commit themselves to, and I quote, promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions. Interestingly, this is one goal that was not included in the earlier MDGs. Twelve targets have been identified under Goal 16, and I was asked briefly to share my own perspectives. In doing so, I came up with six words which, like Peace Palace, begin with the letter P. The first of which is people. We, the people, are the most important factor in the global quest for a better world. Accordingly, all efforts geared towards the achievement of this and other global goals should be people-centered. In addition to eradicating poverty, hunger, and disease, we should ensure that all human beings can fulfill their potential in dignity and equality in a safe and healthy environment. The second P is parity or equality. We should pursue national and international policies that promote equality at all levels and ensure inclusive, participatory, and representative decision-making at all levels. Through the enactment and enforcement of non-discriminatory policies and laws, we can eradicate discriminatory culture and practices at all levels. In particular, countries should aim at achieving full gender equality and participation of women at all levels of decision making. The third P is peace. We should foster peaceful, just and inclusive societies that are free from fear and violence. Countries and governments should identify and tackle the root causes of conflict, such as bad governance, intolerance, and abuse of human rights, and should combat factors that fuel conflict, 
such as flow of illicit arms and finances. Governments should protect vulnerable groups like women and children from violence, exploitation, displacement, and abuse in all its forms, and should combat organized crime, such as slavery and human trafficking. The fourth P is power. And by power, I mean power through the ballot. We need to build strong, effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels of government, including the legislature, judiciary, executive, local governments, etc. In order to truly empower the people, governments should effect policies that promote transparency and combat corruption in public institutions and foster a climate that enables the people to hold elected officials accountable. Professional and independent judicial institutions accompanied by appropriate legal aid schemes will ensure access to justice for all. The fifth P, policy. Governments need to demonstrate political will through clear policies that promote democracy, rule of law, and the respect for fundamental human rights. The sixth P, partnerships. Regional and international bodies, such as the African Union and the European Union and others, need to strengthen global solidarity by prioritizing peace and security and justice on their agendas. States should put greater emphasis on prevention of conflict and on the Pacific settlement of disputes through mediation, negotiation, arbitration, and judicial settlement. Peacekeeping and peacebuilding efforts should also be strengthened to prevent repetition of cycles of disaster. International courts and tribunals, too, need to promote efficiency, independence, and transparency internally and in the way they deal with member states. This will enhance the trust and use of these institutions by member states. These institutions also need to be more representative and inclusive in composition. As you know, the International Court of Justice is the judicial organ of the United Nations whose main function, as you've heard, is to decide such disputes as are submitted to it in accordance with international law. Its membership is quite representative in that it reflects or mirrors the membership of the Security Council. Gender-wise, however, it's a different story. It's a shame that in 70 years at the court and its predecessor have existed, out of the 106 judges elected to serve on the court, only four are women judges, the first of whom joined the court as late as 1995. Since the jurisdiction of the court depends on state consent, more states should consider accepting the compulsory jurisdiction of the court by filing Article 36 declarations with the United Nations. Um, I, I wanted to also share with you um, a statistic that I read with interest today uh, from an organization called GQUO. This organization was set up in September in New York um, to try and promote gender equality amongst international organizations. And they came up with a statistic, um, or interesting statistics, which revealed that the European Court of Human Rights uh, registers an 8.4% uh, gender parity, that's women as opposed to, to um, men. The International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea has only 2.5% uh, women, and the International Court of Justice has only 3.8% women. Now, when I read 3.8 and I considered we were four women, I wondered if I was the 0.8 uh, referred to in there. In conclusion, SDG 16 is a goal of primordial importance, but without implementation of set targets, it will remain on paper. Countries will need to put in place detailed action plans and review and accountability mechanisms in order to achieve, to achieve this and other Millennium Goals. I thank you.